Hare. Today I will briefly discuss some of the creation theories or ideas about how life on earth started. Now this is an interesting debate if one has an open mind. Now, I find it very sad that the different scientists from the different groups don't always sit on the round table and discuss it with an open mind. And that is sad, because scientists are supposed to have an open mind, look at different options, and then make decisions. But the problem is, we all go to the table when it comes to discussions about life and science with preconceived ideas. And we can interpret the same evidence, but make different conclusions. Let me give you an example. If I write this on the board, what is that? If you're English speaking, simple, it's a dog, dog. But if you're Afrikaans speaking, then that is not dog. That is more a case of I think or I thought. Okay? Same evidence, different interpretation. Because you've got a different, different background. And that is one of the problems with, when it comes to these theories. So let's look at some of the basic theories very briefly. Very briefly. You've got two options here to start with. One is, was the creator or was there not the creator? Now, some people argue you cannot bring God into science because you can't have a hypothesis and then prove or disprove the existence of God. Fair, let's take that as an example. But it comes back to the open mind and being fair and unbiased. What about all the theories about multiverses or what goes on inside black holes? We can't test those. We can't have hypothesis to test them. You might say, okay, we just don't have equipment yet. Well, that argument also applies to proving or disproving the existence of the creator. That's my point I'm trying to make here. People are not always open-minded and they're not always unbiased because we come from different backgrounds. The theory that we see most often is obviously evolution. Okay, evolution. Now, even here, you've got some variations to the theory. Okay. Firstly, you can tell a group that says there's no creator, it's all an accident. So we call them the atheistic evolutionist. Atheistic evolutionist. There's no creator, it just happened by accident. They have experiments that try to prove it's possible by adding some gases in a mix and then sending sparks through it and trying to create life. They got some amino acids, but if you continue, it ends up being muck. Now there's a problem with that experiment. If they do manage to make life with that experiment, they're actually proving on the one hand that intelligent life can create life. Which is actually what they don't want to actually try to disprove. But there's another problem. How do they know what the combination of gases was when the Earth was young? So that's also a bit of educated guesswork. Okay. But the point is, they say life started by itself. And there's some people if, uh, that talk about epigenesis and some that try to exclude it from the theory of evolution. But the point is, whether you include it or not, evolution needs epigenesis. Life must start somehow by itself, if you believe in atheistic evolution. Okay. They also need a very long period of time for that to happen because of the slow process and because of all the different species eventually that you have. Then you have what you call your theistic evolutionist. You can actually all also add the deistic evolutionist here as well. These are people that believe that there was a creator that created life and created even the, the scientific laws according to which life progressed. Okay. But what's the difference between theistic and deistic? Theistic evolutionists say that God or the creator is still involved with us as human beings, who cares for us, 
person loves us and so forth. The deistic evolutionist is more a case of the creator creator and now he's standing on the side looking at what what's, is happening to the spectator. Both of these also use a long period of time. They also basically believe in this process like this, but they remove the abogenesis problem by saying there is a creator. Then you also have another group called your intelligent designers. Intelligent designers, they are scientists that say, but there's a creator, so God created. But you know that they say there's a problem. If you've got an ape-like creature, for example, that must now turn into a human-type creature, the knee joint itself is a bit of a problem because there are a couple of mutations needed to produce a human knee. And if only one or two of those mutations are missing, the knee won't function. And if that is the case, if a creature like that gets born, that creature cannot run away from predators, for example and therefore will get eaten by predators before it can reproduce. Also, they have the same argument when it comes to eyesight and stuff like that. Uh, they call it irreducible complexity. Now, obviously, there are a lot of arguments between the different groups, but they also believe in a long period of time, and they also believe basically in the evolutionary process. Then you get another group, which uh, is called the gap theorist. The gap theorist believe that God created, life went on, and then life somehow got destroyed. Whether it was a meteorite, whatever method, life destroyed. And then God created again. So these are all scientists that believe therefore in a long period of time live on old earth. There are scientists involved in all these. And they've got different opinions. Like I said earlier, it depends on from your background and how you look at the evidence. Then you also have got another group that believes that the Earth is young. Okay, there's another group that believes the Earth is young. That actually exists of two different groups again. So you get your young Earth people. The one group is called the Young Earth Creationist. Now, they believe that God created. Now, before you say that they wacko, many of their scientists used to be atheistic evolutionists. But because of the problems they see in the evolution theory, they then concluded, concluded that there must be a creator. Let me give you an example. If you look at dinosaur fossils, you even find soft tissue like a piece of blood vessel in some dinosaur tissue. Now how did that tissue, which is still elastic, they pull it, how did that survive 60 million years as a fossil? Why did it fossilize? Why did it break down? That's just one example. There are other examples as well. I can use one more. You know the transition fossil from dinosaurs to birds? Archaeopteryx. Now, if you look at the age of Archaeopteryx fossils, you'll find they're younger than some bird fossils. Now, is it possible that birds, which are supposed to come from Archaeopteryx, actually have older fossils? So, that does make sense to them. So, they ask questions about the age and all these things as well. And they say that God created kinds. God created, for example, a cat kind. And from that one cat kind, you got lions, leopards, tigers, cheetahs, etc. So God didn't create all the species, so they believe in what you call microevolution. So they do believe that within a kind, there is some evolutionary change taking place. But they do not believe that, for example, a single cell thing became a little worm became a fish became for example a lizard from a lizard became a bird because that's not with a within a kind another example of within a kind would be like god created a dog like creature and from that came wild dogs and wolves etc different types of dog like species and then you get one last group 
um, called the literalists. The literalists, they take the religious scripture literally. For example, they might say God created all species in creation. This is different to what the young creationists say. So they don't believe in any form of evolution, not even microevolution. So that they don't believe, therefore, that the God created one cat species and lions, tigers, and leopards and cheetahs came from that. They said God created at the start lions, leopards, tigers, cheetahs, etc. Because they also believe in a young earth. There's lots to be more to be said about these different theories. And lots of debate. It's an interesting debate. Just something to look at with an open mind. Thank you for watching.